Welcome back to Alan Hoodie Central. First off, apology, I haven't uploaded in a while. I've been filming this montage of clips. I like the word montage. This montage of clips about how to make the sign and turn this to this. So first off, I had an offcut of 9mm ply, which I have lying around in the garage, which wasn't really uh, being used at all. So I decided to make a sign for Alna Hoodie Central for the room layout. Now the first thing, uh, we had to cut it down. So first thing of all, safety, 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 goggles. We had our ear defenders and my little boy was helping me out. So we got his uh, tools out, which were quite handy. Uh, and we cut it down to the size required. Then we gave it a good sanding uh, just to get all the edges neat. So prior to this I went to Hobbycraft and bought all the letters that I need for the word Alma Hoodie Central. Now the letters were around 60 or maybe possibly 80, don't quote me on this, 60 to 80p per letter. So they weren't too much and I made the whole word and then spaced it out onto the actual ply so that I had good spacing between the letters and just glued down with normal PVA. Next up was drilling using these countersink drills. Uh, these are drill bits which mean you can drill through the wood and countersink them at the same time, which is a very handy piece of kit and means you don't have to swap drill bits uh, to make the countersink. So I'd highly recommend getting a set of these, not too expensive, you can get them from two -star tool station, screw fix, places like that. And it saves a lot of time in making your countersink holes, as you can see here. So next up, as you can see, was priming the whole piece. Uh, that included the wood, that included the paper mache letters. Just used normal white primer on this. This is actually uh, your undercoat and primer. Uh, and made sure that I filled in all the gaps, all the holes. And then once that had gone on, it was time for the first coat. Now this paint is from B&Q. And I had them mixed up by the guy at B&Q. And for a 236ml pot, it only costs three quid, so for value for money, very good. Now this is Freshwater Pearls Pot, uh, and it's an interior matte paint. You can just see the difference there between the Y and the D. Next up was, I bought some beading from B&Q again actually. Mitered the corners glued them down with PVA and made sure there was a snug fit all the way around the actual board. I hammered them into place two stews and tacks just to make sure that they stayed in place and then filled in with some decorator's cork because that can be overpainted. Again I went around all the letters using uh, another coat of the freshwater pill paint and then removed the tacks once and I was happy with the beading uh, being glued down. Painted the beading, uh, again using the undercoat. And then I was onto my next colour. I pucker up. 
Now this, when you take the lid off, once you've given it a good shake, this doesn't look anything like the colour that you have on the board and the guy behind the desk who was mixing the paint tested it before because I was a bit sceptical about the colour. And when it goes down originally like this, it looks pink. But when it dries, it's a dark maroon kind of red wine colour, uh, which is exactly what I wanted for the sign. So I was very careful going around all the letters. What I could have done it in hindsight is painted all this uh, the same colour and then stuck the letters down, uh, which may have saved time, come to think of it, but hey, hindsight's a wonderful thing. And so this took many, many coats. So once I had painted all the fiddly bits around the letters, that's when the bigger brush can come into play. And that's when the majority of the paint can go down on the actual surface. Coat after coat of this stuff, I'm trying not to get it onto the actual letters, it was quite a hindrance. So I would recommend painting the baseboard first, and then sticking down the letters. I'd already stuck the letters down, I was too eager, and I had to paint around them. But it was no great shakes, it just meant I took a longer time to do it. As you can see, the more layers that go down, the deeper the colour goes, uh, to the more bottled red wine colour, the, the maroon kind of colours that you see on some heritage signs uh, in the railways. So this is what the uh, sign looks like. I have uh, neatened up all the edges on the lettering so that there's no overspill paint. And now it's time for screwing it onto the wall. So all it took was four uh, 2 b 8 screws in each corner in the holes that you've pre-drilled with the cam stink uh, drill bit. They went up, no problem, with the appropriate wall plugs. This is what it looks like when you uh, walk into the room. I know you can probably buy some off the internet, but I had the stuff uh, lying around, so I thought I'd make good use of the materials that I had. Yes, I had to buy some of the letters, and the paints but so stay tuned I promise there's going to be an update soon Al Nahudi Central is still alive and I've been busy wiring seat point motors so that's going to be the next update so check out soon a new video will be up I promise and I hope to catch you guys and girls later cheers